Hello everybody, welcome back to It's Current Year for another fan submission. Today's one has been sent in by Ronan, an XMT clan mate of mine. He's playing the Empire, led by the Toddbringer, and he's up against Bellovex, playing the Warriors of Chaos on Blue Reach River. And, oh, circle the wagons, guys. The Empire's going to war. So we'll put it on a bit of a slow play because we do have some uh, distance to cover here on, on Peak Pass. It's one of the... One of, or Blue Ridge River, whichever map this is. This is Blue Ridge River, yeah. Uh, it's a large map, one of the largest maps in the pool, actually. So we've got a, a sort of off-center deployment here from Bellovex. Four units of Marauder Horsemen being babysit by some Poison Warhounds. We've got some chariots in the rear here. A infantry core of Marauder Great Weapons, the Demon Spew on the flanks, and the Mirror Guard. I love the Mirror Guard. They've actually got a really good... Uh, yeah, they are the Slanish worshippers, and they've uh, really, really nailed the aesthetic on them. Behind uh, the infantry line, we've got two units of armored Chaos Trolls, which is not a unit that you see very often, but uh, not a bad choice here, and for reasons that we'll, we'll go into in a second. We've got the Weird Spawn. They obviously do have an armor sunder in effect, uh, and uh, all the good stuff that comes with Chaos Spawn. Most notably, 160 weapon strength, which is massive. And yeah, some armor sundering. So, I mean, paired on top of the, uh, the Mirror Guard, who do have good stats and decent weapon strength, but just lack armor piercing. They're actually a, a good little one-two punts. Pretty expensive. Leading the force, we have Sarthoriel, the Everwatcher. Looks like he is coming in with Final Transmutation, Searing Doom, Plague of Rust, as well as obviously all his uh, uh, Stand or Die and Arcane Conduit. Pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory kit there. I usually do like to take him with the Scroll of Power because it lets him sort of uh, shotgun out double um, Arcane Conduits, but... Yeah, he's gone. Uh, he's trimmed that item here. So, war wagons, as we said, just the regular version with the uh, sort of repeating handguns on the back here. What a cool model! What a cool model! And uh, yeah, they do have 360 firing arcs and obviously uh, some pretty good missile strength. So, also have a lot of ammo too. 40 ammunition. I didn't realize they had that much. That's uh, that's pretty nasty. So, three units of the war wagons out the front. A mix of spearmen and flagellants. Some handguns, one of which is the silver bullets, obviously with their magical ammunition. They are so, also are a stalk, um, so they are probably hidden at the moment from Bellow Vex. Some Empire Knights on each flank, and leading the force up in the sky, we have a Bright Wizard riding a Pegasus with Burning Head Fire. Uh, he's got the Fire Cloak, which is not a bad little spell. Good for um, good for up in. I guess someone like Boris Toddbringer, who 40 melee defense on the, on his Griffin isn't isn't great, and also Fireball, so he's pretty. Uh, he's coming in with a you know, decent kit of spells here, and the Todd Bringer, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite lords in the game. Actually, I just love, I just love the mustache, and I just love the fact that he's a bit of a, he's a bit, of, he's a bit of a prick actually, Todd Bringer. But he's gone the Middenland, Middenland Runefang, also known as Legbiter, eight second, uh, eight HP per second regen. The White Cloak of Ulrich, as well as the Blood Roar. So he's got some, uh, some nice debuffs here, which is going to actually be pretty big. Uh, when uh, taking into consideration the fact that the trolls might actually be very susceptible to some leadership uh, issues here. So as uh, to be expected, the war wagons are going to come out in front. No real reason to um, advance anything else and you know, pull them out of position or tire them out. The war wagons with uh, 50 speed aren't exactly fast, but they've got a pretty significant range bonus on these Marauder Horsemen. And there are some Empire Knights here who can potentially pull out and uh, and screen the retreat of the war wagons if they do need to sort of call it a day and get back to their uh, front line. So um, not, not a great use of ammo here, honestly. And I understand, obviously, there's no other targets presenting themselves at the moment, but Pegasus is, and they're sort of like eagles, very small hitbox, and obviously with their stagger animations, they do miss a lot of the time. And as a single entity, it's actually very hard to really make any meaningful contact. So a good uh, waste of some ammo here. He has taken some damage, but he doesn't have a lot of actual threats in this uh, in, in this in this Warriors of Chaos build. You know, no manticores or anything like that. So he can uh, he can sit up in the sky and afford to take some uh, take some jabs to the face and and get some work done. So Chariot's coming out in front. Would be, Yeah, nice targeting here from Ronan. He's going to get some shots into the Chariots and they are gonna take a fair bit of damage here and need to pull back. Don't wanna be losing unit models on them. Obviously Chariots, you know, they can operate um, operate pretty much at full efficiency at, at pretty low health, providing they don't lose unit models. As we see a nice Fireball actually land there. And Fireball doesn't have a lot of AP, so I'm 
wondering whether that might have been a uh, an overcast but the Marauder Horsemen are coming into the front line uh, approaching the front line now don't want to get too bold here and good use of the wagons just pulling them behind the behind the spears behind the flagellants and as this Warriors of Chaos force does sort of barrel down onto the Empire the main goal here of the front line and even just the Empire Knights is to basically buy time buy time for the handguns buy time for the war wagons I mean, Flagellants here, they're going to do pretty well into the Chaos Marauder Great Weapons. That's about it. They're not going to do great into the Trolls. They'll do terribly into the Mirror Guard, and they'll get absolutely buzzsawed by the Demon Spew pretty quickly, just because of, you know, they're not armored at all and, uh, you know, don't have great me melee defense either. You know, they do have a buff in combat, but, yeah, I think it's about low 20, something like this. So I think we're going to see a final transmutation go down here. Not a lot of high-value targets here. It's probably going to do a bit of a number on these uh, Empire Knights, but might have liked to act... I don't know if that would have actually pulled models off getting it on the War Wagons, but it is going to collapse this flank quite quickly. These Empire Knights are probably going to route off, and the Flagellants now can probably be finished off by the Demon Spew, who do have their own stat buffs. On this side, though, it's gone a little bit better for the Empires, and the Armored Trolls now are probably just going to get pincushioned uh, rather nastily by the handguns. Probably doesn't actually want to have these Empire Knights in here because that's a good target for the, the Chaos Trolls. Chaos Trolls are now going to make a bit of a bolt for it because, uh, yeah, spears and handguns, that's not where they want to be. And, yeah, Trolls are having some leadership issues as to be expected. Now, Boris has uh, gotten a little bit bold here, and I think he may have got pinned in by the Trolls, and he's probably suffered a fair bit at the hands of the Horsemen as well, but he manages to get back up in the sky. So he can maybe do some... Uh, he can just chill for a bit, get some health back, and the Demon Spew have pushed in all the way from this flank and are now barreling down onto the Silver Bullet. So this is good use uh, of the Cav, bringing them back in to try and screen. We've had a uh, unit of Spearmen, unfortunately, be pulled out of position here, and... Might be able to box in these Marauder Horsemen, but they can probably also just dance around if they need to. The War Wagons, though, are all pretty much online, and they might need to lead, unfortunately, these Marauder Horsemen back into their own handguns here, but there's potential here for a bit of a Last Samurai, but these Horsemen have broken free from the Empire Knights out on the right flank, and they're going to barrel home. Good use of the Horsemen here. Obviously, Silver Bullets do not want to be fighting in combat, and even Sartorial is getting in on the action here over onto the regular handgunners over here unfortunately he's lost the support of his marauder horsemen and this chariot's probably not going to last very long given it's got you know, 200 hp left but the war wagons at the moment what are the hounds doing what happened to those hounds that were over here they didn't get shattered did they because that's a bad oh that would have been nasty they would have been nice to have i oh, know they're over here with the trolls so they're just bouncing around these trolls very healthy however so um, right decision, I think, pulling them back now because the war wagons and the handgunners have sort of stabilized and now actually Sartorial is pretty isolated. Hounds are making their way over and they will do a lot of damage to handguns on the charge. Sartorial is no slouch in combat, but he is not in the same class of Boris Toddbringer, even in his uh, bashed up state. And Sarthi now is getting turned and even with his massive missile resistance, I believe it's uh, 50%. Yes, 50%. I believe it was 60% once upon a time, but the fact that, yeah, it's a lot of fire coming in on him here, and he's also been smacked by Boris. Although we could get a nice little hit here. Looks like the Silver Bullets have actually had a couple of their models pulled into combat, just, you know, by being stuck on the, uh, by being stuck against him, but nice dodge there by Ronan. The War Wagons here, still firing away and still very healthy, and again, same, same, uh, same issue that we have with Chariots. They are, but for all intents and purposes, at full strength until they actually start losing unit models. So it looks like this one has, no, there's three here as well. It looks like he might be caught up. So they can take as much damage as they want, but until they actually start dying, they're still firing all of their ammunition. They've still got their full DPS output from, uh, from range. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a fair bit of damage. Although I guess it is getting soaked up by the missile resistance. This unit of trolls, though, full health. Full health, full models. Still probably plenty of uh, healing to be done. The spearmen here are going to be terror outed off. And even the mirror guard now, still very healthy. So if we can sort of get Bellovex to reroute a lot of his mobile assets, and he does have some of them still around the battlefield, I suppose it's pretty thin on the ground, but... Um, we just need to pressure. We just need to pressure the handguns, and we need to commit as as sort of a, a unified force here. Pull back, 
Make sure you're taking as much shots onto the shields of the mirror guard as possible or soaking up as much of it with Sartorial as you can and not allowing them to get sort of this overlapping fire. But this is a nice little kill box here from Ronan. And the other issue is with Boris still on the field and his debuffs, you don't want to get too separated because if the trolls and the mirror guard and even just, you know, the tattered remains of these marauders go after different targets, Boris will pick you off one by one. Put on a little bit of a fast play here just to see what happens. The Mirror Guard are going to finish off these Flagellants, but they're taking a lot of shots now into the back. And now we see the, the wagons being used as chariots. Now, they are definitely a they are definitely a mobile artillery piece. They are not Scourge Runner chariots. They, they don't really want to be in combat, but having used all of their ammunition, it's a perfectly fine place for them. And now Boris... This is what I mean. He's just occupying the Mirror Guard. The Mirror Guard are immune to psychology, so then at least they're not going to terror out. But everything of this is just, I mean, that's a last samurai if ever you've seen it. And yeah, they're not going to make it in. And these handguns now can probably fire with impunity. I'd probably just send actually these war wagons in just to body block the trolls now and let the let the handguns just fire away because the armor, uh, you know, the armor of the trolls means nothing here. And the morale is dropping very, very quickly. And I wouldn't be surprised with the balance of power where it is. Um, I think we're going to hit army losses pretty soon for the Warriors of Chaos. Yeah, the Trolls are going to break. Toddies are... Yeah, okay, that's Trolls shattering. Everything else is shattering. That is going to be army losses. And it looks like South Oriel is going to come back in for one last little... Uh, one last hurrah. But, uh, yeah, he's not in He's not in the class of Toddy. And Toddy's actually done... <laughs> yeah, that's, a good, that's a good way to actually uh, hit the end screen there. Cop that, South Oriel. But yeah, to Toddy had actually done a body of work just staying safe and healing back up there. And a very, very well played victory to Ronan. We'll play Develo Vex though. This is, a, this is actually quite a cool list. I actually like uh, a lot of the elements here. Probably didn't need the great weapons. Probably just would have been handy to just be a little bit wider. I mean, Marauders will trade fine into just state troops. Um, for the cost, they probably just even trade better, to be honest, into Flagellants as well. Because the APs you know, meaningless. Um, and then they can maybe soak up some some shots on the shield. So, um, but yeah, other than that, cool to see some chaos, uh, some armored chaos trolls. I mean, it, leadership is just always such a such an issue. They work well with Archeon because you can at least buff their leadership a little bit through the uh, Crown of Domination. You can make them make immune to psychology as well. Um, but yeah, look at that. Look how healthy they are. I mean, this one, I think, routed and has probably done a fair bit of healing while it's routing. But, uh, yeah, some uh, some cool use of the units at his uh, disposal here. He Bellivex probably could have uh, done a little bit better at using his mobility to get around the flanks because he actually dealt with the knights quite well. And, yeah, the knights haven't got massive value, but they've bought time, and that's the important thing here. Pretty much likewise the front line. I mean, the flagellants, okay value. Uh, spears, spears are never really going to... I suppose that one's done quite well, but yeah, Spear's never really going to get massive value, but I mean, you look at all the damage output here. The handguns tee off, the war wagons on a big map like this can uh, some, can scoot up in the start, use their range over stuff like horsemen um, to good effect, and uh, I think they've pretty much all used all their ammunition, and they've all made, yeah, all made over a K back. So cool use of actually the war wagons here. Kiting um, is a very commonly used strategy from the empire here into the uh into the warriors of chaos or the guerrieri del chaos as uh as it's known i think ronan is italian um so usually you'll see it with pistoliers and outriders uh but war wagons doing the business here as well so pretty cool to see handgunners actually surprised to see actually surprised to see that little damage value on them. I suppose they were shooting South Oriel, so there's a lot of missile resistance at play there. And yeah, Boris's um, Boris's biggest strength is obviously his debuffs and being able to isolate things and pick them off quickly through terror outs. Uh, he's a, obviously a pretty decent combatant and he's quite uh, you know, he's got some he's got some staying power obviously with the with the regen and it does open up the the magic slot for you to go something other than life, which you'd have to take if you're going Carl Franz. So I actually, uh, I, as I said, I, I'm a big fan of Boris. I probably, uh, he's probably, I mean, personally, probably my favorite Empire Lord. 
you know, Volkmar and Marcus pretty strong. Um, even the Huntsman General in some some builds works fine. And then, you know, Carl obviously is brought to be a pretty hard carry. But yeah, it's always nice to see. Uh, I guess him out of a uh, coming out of Carl's shadow a little bit. So thanks to both players, particularly Ronan for sending it in, and thanks to you guys for checking it out. And until next time, take care.